You may not like it. You may not agree with it. You may not want it to happen. But one thing that you absolutely cannot deny is that this is such a Baltimore Ravens typical type of move. Team Keep It Clean and breaking news just a little bit ago. It got announced that the New England Patriots are releasing Juju Smith-Schuster. And he still owes $7 million from New England. But get this. We just talked about how this would be such a Ravens type of move. This is a, yet another reason why it is. It's because Ari said, my sports update, he said, Juju Smith-Schuster is owed $7 million, fully guaranteed by the Patriots this season. So that's the money that he's getting from New England, regardless if he plays or not, regardless if he signs somewhere or not, regardless. That's his bread. Just the kicker, though. But they are cutting him regardless. Any new team that signs him will more than likely get him for the minimum. You cannot look me in the face or you can't look at the screen or whatnot and tell me that this don't got Baltimore Ravens written all over. Team Keep It Clean, we about to get into it. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video or a single live stream like we'll be seeing y'all in a couple hours for the Ravens and Eagles preseason game. And also, leave a like on the video, click that thumbs up button. We are also on audio now too. Just search engraving pods the same way we got engraving vids for this just look up engraving pods and you can find the audio versions of all of these videos i love y'all team keep it clean let's get into it so juju smith schuster is now or getting ready to officially be a free agent very very soon the baltimore ravens as we know recently they've been signing receivers left and right up and that they, they, they just keep bringing receivers over and over and over and over first a couple of days ago it was Russell Gage. Then uh, yesterday, uh, it was Anthony Miller. And the Baltimore Ravens, they seem to have a type. They seem to have a type of receiver that they have wanted to bring in. Somebody that's been quiet over the past couple of years. But years ago, they used to be making some plays. So maybe the Baltimore Ravens are just looking to have sort of a resurgence for some of these wide receivers. Juju Smith-Schuster fits that bill perfectly he's somebody that he, he used to make some noise back in Pittsburgh he used to make some noise back there I mean we know we remember the games um but then once he joined the New England Patriots and I know he dealt with some injuries off and on too but he has been pretty quiet and I honestly and it's not a shot at Juju Smith-Schuster at all because uh, he's in the league I'm not but I, I forgot that he was in New England I did not remember that he was a New England Patriot, and that's probably more on me than anything because I just y'all know sometimes I just can't keep up with where everybody goes but Juju Smith-Schuster has been kind of quiet. And I know, obviously, the situation's been different in New England than it was in Pittsburgh. Like, he went from catching passes from Mac Jones. Or but anyway, so Juju Smith-Schuster is a free agent. Now, um, with the Baltimore Ravens bringing in receivers left and right, right and left, uh, it has led us to speculate and wonder if Rashad Bateman's injury is worse than what the Baltimore Ravens initially reported and what they've been letting us know. We'll see. I think this week will really tell the story on that because this week, hey, if Rashad Bateman returns to practice, it's like, oh, okay, cool. No problem. He's back. Let's go. All right, we with it. Yeah. But if he doesn't, then it'll be like, oh, uh, okay. I get it. So we'll see. And I'm sure obviously the reporters are going to ask the questions about Rashad Bateman at the presses and whatnot. If he does not um, show up back to practice, uh, the first day that he doesn't show up to practice, hopefully we ain't even got to have this conversation, but the first day he doesn't show up to practice, reporters going to be on it. Hey, what's the status with Rashad Bateman? Hey, when is Rashad Bateman coming back? Hey, what's going on with Rashad Bateman? That's going to be what they ask. But hopefully we ain't even got to worry about that because he ends up showing up. But regardless, this is very, very typical Baltimore Ravens move. Now, another reason, let me take you back a little bit. Another reason why this is such a Baltimore Ravens move. I take you back, like, what was that, maybe three years ago? Two, three years ago? It was a little bit ago. But do you remember when the Baltimore Ravens, they tried to bring on Juju Smith? They tried to sign Juju Smith-Schuster. I know a lot of y'all forgot. I even forgot about that until he just became a free agent. Then it clicked in my memory. They tried to sign Juju Smith-Schuster. They even offered him more total money than the Steelers did. Ravens really tried to sign Juju. Now, the way that it was structured, that's the way that it ended up being more total money. But Because it wasn't no crazy higher amount than he was going to get with Pittsburgh, but still. So the Ravens tried. They tried. I believe it was around the time, the, the, the Sammy Watkins era with the Baltimore Ravens. Ooh, that was rough. But anyway, 
They tried to sign Juju Smith-Schuster. So you know, like, with Eric DaCosta, we've seen it before. With Eric DaCosta, we've seen and I know these players are not all the same. They are different positions. They are different points of their careers. But with Eric DaCosta, we've seen it plenty of times where he tries to sign somebody. And if he initially fails and an opportunity presents itself again, and obviously he has a need on the team, then he goes right back around and ends up making it happen. Yannick Ngakwe. When he was going through his thing with the J Jacksonville Jaguars, he did not want to be with the Jaguars. Eric DaCosta was like, hold up, this dude's from Maryland, let me bring him home. Let me go get him. So he tried to trade for him. It obviously failed. Yannick Ngagwe bounced around. He ended up in, on the Minnesota Vikings. Wasn't working out there. Eric DaCosta said, oh, oh, it's not working out again. This is so nice that I'm going to try it twice. Let me try to get him. Boom, he got him. Justin Houston. Justin Houston got relief from the Chiefs, I believe. Eric DaCosta was all over it. He wanted him, brought him in for a visit. Oh, we want Justin Houston to be a Baltimore Raven. Justin Houston ended up going to the Indianapolis Colts, stayed over there for a couple of years. Eric DaCosta was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to wait it out and see how this thing plays out. Guess what happened? It played out. He left the Colts. Eric DaCosta said, Justin Houston, come on home, my friend. More recently, Derek Henry. Derek Henry, last offseason, excuse me, last season, uh, there was the Ravens were trying to trade for Derrick Henry. They were so close. They had everything worked out. Then all of a sudden, the Titans said, nope, we don't want him going there. They shut it down. And guess what happened this offseason? Well, you know the rest of that story. So Eric DaCosta is somebody that if he don't get you the first time and you become available, a lot of times he will try, try, try again. So, again, with the way that they've been moving at wide receiver, it would not surprise me one bit at all if the Baltimore Ravens end up going after Juju Smith-Schuster. So team, keep it clean. As you all know, you all are a huge part of this channel and everything that we do here. Not that I do, that we do. And a big part of this channel is the questions that come from y'all. So if you would ever like to have your question featured in the video, just send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And if you're a patron, though, if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can just send your question directly on Patreon. So this next question came from my guy, Donald. He said, uh, Jalen Armand Davis has a slot corner. Ooh, okay, let's see. He said, my name is Donald, and I'm stationed over here in Germany at the moment, so that's why I'm messaging you a bit early. My question is, do you think Jalen Armand Davis would be a good option for the nickel corner role? I know you spoke about Audarius Washington and Nate Wiggins, but I feel like Jalen Armour Davis has been having a good camp and can take the role if he has a good preseason with his reads and coverage. That's a really, really good question. And, yeah, they have been saying that he just keeps stacking good practices after practices, so that's a really, really good thing. Now, with that being said, um, the part that's very tricky for me and I think for the Baltimore Ravens especially is his health. It's been his health. That's been the biggest thing with his career, uh, the start of his career. Because you, you remember his rookie year, they had him out there. They had him out there one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek Hill. I don't know what that was, but they had him out there nonetheless. Uh, but then he got hurt, and then he just kept getting hurt uh, over and over, so he kept just missing a, a lot of time. So that's been what's really been holding him back. Uh, would they trust him to be their starting slot corner? I think injuries may hold them back from fully trusting him. But, hey, at this point, if he's on a roster and you don't want to go get no outside help, then, hey, you got to do it. But then there's a thing where you could be like, yeah, we talked about our Darius Washington. It's the same thing with him. Injuries have held him back and forced him to miss a lot of time. So it's the same trust factor there. Would you trust him to be a starting slot corner? Again, if you want to go outside, then – but if you want to stay inside, then you ain't got no choice. You want to keep it in-house. Um, he also said he has been waiting for his chance, and with the Mallette injury, it will be a perfect chance to step up and take that spot. I got a feeling he'll be a good depth piece for late in the season. Let me know if I'm just overthinking, and again, sorry for the early tip. Don't apologize, man. And no, you're not overthinking nothing at all, um, because that, that, that's a really good question. It's a really, really good question. But Ravens, it's nice to know that they have options because they could be like Brandon Stevens and Nate Wiggins, y'all the outside corners, Marlon Humphrey going to be in the slot. Uh, Brandon Stevens and Marlon Humphrey, y'all the outside corners, um, Nate Wiggins going to be in the slot. Marlon Humphrey and Nate Wiggins, y'all the outside corners, Brandon Stevens going to be in the slot. You, like, you got all these different mix and match options that you could go with. But, yeah, starting tonight in the preseason game 
I do expect us to see a lot of Jalen Armand Davis, and hopefully he'll be out there uh, because on the first series because it's said that Philly is going to be playing their starters for that first series. So that should really be fun to watch him and just really watch all these good practices that he's been stacking up translate to good on the field play next question one more so comment came from my guy tj and y'all know how he be getting down he said this is getting sad two wide receivers sign two vet wide receivers get dk metcalf or brandon Ayuk, please this is getting sad oh so my guy tj you know he ain't gonna like this video one bit especially with that juju smith juice he ain't gonna like this one bit because Hey, DK Metcalf will be great. Brandon Ayuk will be nice, but that's just not how the Ravens get down, my friend, and you already know. 